Hi, and thanks for joining us for a little bit of what's new in Max 7. We're going to be taking a look into working with uh, plugins in Max. This is great for people who want to do some exploration, don't want to have to build everything from the ground up. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this little icon here on the left uh, margin. It says plugins, and if we pull it up, we'll see, we'll look at them all, we can look just at our audio unit plugins, or VST plugins, or most interestingly, uh, Max for live, live devices. So in this case, I'm going to take one of my favorites, Additive Heaven, which uh, provides us a little eight harmonic additive synth where you can set the volumes and the actual harmonic for each, as well as setting a simple little ADSR envelope. Uh, you can choose the amount of polyphony you want and the levels that you want. It's a great little tool for doing pads and little ambient uh, fill-ins. Um, one of the things that you're going to find in the blog post for this video, uh, available at cycling74.com, is you're going to find a little abstraction that uh, Ben Bracken put together for us. It's called MIDI keys, and um, I'm going to instantiate it by doing a B patcher and then just saying MIDI keys. As long as the MIDI keys abstraction is somewhere in our search path, uh, you'll get the B patcher, and I can kind of stretch it out until I see all the parts of it, or all my parts. Now, it would be really useful if you're going to use this a lot to save it as a snippet, but I just wanted to do it this way because when you first start using it, that's what you're going to see. Now, the MIDI keys abstraction only has one outlet, but it's very interestingly put together. It is the exact kind of MIDI stream that a Max for Life device is going to want to see coming into its right inlet. Now you'll notice there are three inlets, channel 1 in, channel 2 in. This would be for audio processors like effects or whatever. And then the third input is where MIDI comes in. So basically we take the MIDI out of the MIDI keys abstraction, shovel it into the additive heaven, and then um, if we take a look at the outlets for the Max for Life device, we see the left channel 1 and 2 are available. And then the third outlet is for MIDI output, if it happens to be a MIDI effect. And the fourth is information. We'll take a look at that in just a second. But for now, let's just do an easy DAC object. Connect our two outlets. Lock our patch. And uh, play our keyboard. Oh, nothing happens. Why not? Because with MIDI keys abstraction, you have to actually enable the MIDI keys uh, to work. So in this case, I'll enable it. Now if I play my keyboard, it's really just like the keyboard that you find in Ableton Live, uh, including the use of the Z and the X keys to move up and down octaves. Okay, so this is sort of like a really basic setup. You can see with three objects and a couple of patch chords, we're actually using a Max for Live device. There's a couple of things that are going to be kind of interesting. First of all, it'd be nice if we could make little bits of Max programming actually affect the Additive Heaven synth. And in order to do that, you would need to know what messages to send this. Well, all of these parameters are mapped as they were uh, Max for Live devices, but what we need to do is we need to find out what those mappings are. So the easiest way to do that is if I hold down control and click, I see all my available attributes and messages, and I see one called get params. So I'm going to take get params, I'm going to slide it over here, and I'm going to assume that this info out represents the information that get params gives me. So I'm going to set up a print here to be able to see what my params are. Now if I lock my patch and I click on get params, sure enough, I see a whole list of every parameter that's exposed by the additive habit device. Now in this case, I'm just going to take a look at this and I can see that, huh, look, there's a bunch of different harmonic things here. I'm going to see if it might not just be the one named harmonic, whatever. And we're going to select harmonic four here. What I'm going to do is set up just a really simple integer object into a message that says harmonic underscore four and then dollar sign one. 
So I'm going to construct a message that says harmonic 4 and then whatever value I put in here. I'm going to shovel this into the right uh, leftmost input, lock my patch, and move this around and see if this works. Sure enough, you can see the fourth harmonic, which in this case, the first harmonic is always locked. So in this case, it's the fourth harmonic, and I can see that as I move between 0 and 127, I run the whole range of that harmonic's values. That's cool. So in order to make this a little bit more interesting and kind of self-playing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a random 128, so I get the range between 0 and 127, and I'm going to feed it from a metro 250, and I'm going to do the at active 1 so that I don't have to have a toggle box. It's just going to run all the time. You can see now it's, it kicks off running, and there goes my harmonic bopping around. And if I lock my patch again, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to turn up my fourth harmonic since now I want that one to stick out a little more. Okay, so cool. Now we have a neat little thing. And if I stretch out my envelopes a little bit, I get a nice little semi-sequence uh, synth ambient pad. Now this doesn't only work with uh, AMXD devices or Max for Live devices. You can insert any kind of plugin. And so what I'm going to do in order to make this even more of a useful ambient pad, I'm going to go back into my plugins, go into VST devices, and spin down here and get one of my favorites, Valhalla Vintage Verb. If I drop this guy in here, um, you'll see that it implements sort of a generic interface. But if I want to see the original VST interface, I can always just lock my patch and hit the little wrench, and I'll get the standard Valhalla interface. But for now, what I'm going to do is just kind of depend on this guy here. I'm going to uh, connect up the outputs, two outputs of my additive heaven synth to the two audio inputs of my VST. I'm going to take the leftmost two outlets, which are the two audio channels, run them into my uh, run them into my Easy DAC, and now if I lock my patch and play this, So hopefully that gives you an idea about how this stuff can work for you, how you can play around with the different devices that are already in your system, whether you are uh, using a lot of VST or audio units plugins, or especially if you have access to all the synths and stuff that you can get as part of the Max for Live collections that come with the Ableton Suite software or that you can buy individually. Um, I hope that was useful. Thanks a lot, and I'll catch you next time around.